Mike McLean, Hall of Fame columnist, wrote a column, uh, a story about uh, former Baylor safety Jalen Petrie was in the Waco trip. Read it earlier. I read it over the weekend, and uh, I think I think I think he's pretty good at it. Yeah, I think, I make, maybe he'll make a, a living out of it. Got a yeah. future, John. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I I didn't get a chance to grade it, but I I thought John, you did well. Are you going to do this for a living? You know what I I tweeted last week that I was nervous about it, and uh, and uh, I saw Bryce Cherry retweeted it and said I think he can handle it. Yeah. And the reason, and truthfully, I was nervous about it, not because of Petrie. You know, I've written a million stories on football players, but just the fact that it was for the Waco Tribune Arrow which will always have a soft spot with me. And because that's where I started, grew up reading it, grew up reading Dave Campbell that worked for Dave Campbell. There's not been a lot of people in Waco through the decades who read Dave and actually got to work for him. That list, you could, I think, count everybody on two hands. And so it was such an honor. And so I will always be a fan of the Trib. What about your story in particular? You knew about Jalen Petrie. You know his story. Uh, anything in particular uh, uh, in your story that you didn't know when you started to kind of put it together? Well, I had never paid attention to, to uh, why. You know, he, I went back and read our stories. He actually committed his junior year in 2015. Then he signed early in 2016. And, of course, that class got to transfer and all be eligible and i told him i said do you realize how baylor people would love to have a statue built of you outside the stadium because of your loyalty to the program and you guys know things that we don't know how humble he is mm -hmm. and you know what a great family he comes from having a master's working on another degree and people ask me well is he going to be a safety to play in 2d coverage is he going to cover man i said i do not see jalen Petrie with his size, 5'11", 198, and his nose for the football, his instinct and his intellect playing in a deep zone. I think they want him around the line of scrimmage, covering slot receivers, covering bigger tight ends, letting him make plays on the ball when he doesn't go for a play fake. And you don't get a be a defensive back with as many tackles for loss as he had. That's amazing. Shows his expertise is playing around the line of scrimmage, and that's something they need. And I believe he and Derek, Derek Stingley Jr., the first pick, third overall, they'll be starting from day one. Did Did anybody get a look at what they were going to try to do with them? I mean, rookie minicamp is not anything, but you can kind of see where they want to put people when they run through drills. Did they do that with him at rookie minicamp? Paul, here's what I've learned about rookie minicamps hmm. through the years. You and I would be the only ones that would look great in shorts and T-shirts. Everybody <laughs> else looks great. Everybody's a Super Bowl contender in shorts and a T-shirt. So when the media got to see them, they're just trying to find where the practice fields are. Mm -hmm. They're trying to find at that point how to get out of NRG Stadium over the bridge over Kirby Drive and onto the practice field. So that's really what a rookie minicamp is, is orientation. I'll never forget 2000. In 17, when they traded up to get Deshaun Watson. And Bill O'Brien told me this kid is so talented, but it's going to take time for him to learn an NFL offense compared to what he ran in college. After the first rookie minicamp, he came up to me and he said, this kid's going to be starting right away. I said, well, whoa, what do you mean? He said, I can't believe how quick he picked up everything. We give him stuff to, to learn. And most of them do learn some, most of them don't. Every day, the three days he came back, and it was obvious from his questions, he had read everything we had given him, studied it, and knew exactly what to write. He said, this kid is sharp, and he's going to start, and I think he's going to start right away. He started the second game, and uh, the rest was history. And I think Petrie, because of his experience, the fact he's been around, a long time, and he played in two different systems, two different positions. Having Dave Aranda come in there and they move him to the star position where he could play that hybrid safety linebacker. And really, uh, if you're covering slot receivers, 
little guys, you're almost like a cornerback. And that's one reason they loved him, his versatility. And Lovey Smith loves him because of that versatility. So I think those smart guys make the quickest adjustments. And a lot of time, these position coaches know that after having them for a weekend for the rookie mini camp. Now OTAs start, and it's going to be bigger than training camp will start. But I think because Petrie, you know, wasn't just a two-year player done with a red shirt, the fact that he stayed so long at Baylor, and he's a testament that if you go the distance, and you're getting the right coaches and the right system, and it's good for you, and you've got good teammates around him, you too can make $8.9 million. <laughs> that's all. That's all it takes. Uh, John uh, John Mechie, uh, you know, one of their top picks, uh, obviously came into the draft with an injury, uh, suffered late in Alabama season. What's kind of the, the overall outlook? It seems pretty positive from what uh, tidbits I've been reading, but uh, are they, they expecting him, him to be back sooner rather than later? I watched most of Alabama's games last season because of Bill O'Brien. I wanted to see how he would do, how the offense would go with him as the coordinator. And so every time I look up, John Matchy or Jameson Williams making plays down the field. And I've always liked Matchy as receiver. And then he got hurt in the SEC title game where Williams got hurt in the national championship game. So he's out about a month more. And they think he might be ready for, you know, after the first quarter of the season, he'll come in, play slot receiver with Brandon Cooks, perennial thousand yard receiver on one side, and Nico Collins, who was a third round pick last year, who flashed. He'll be the other outside guy. And so they love what he can possibly do. Now, he's got a lot to learn, and the guy who benefits the most from Mechie, uh, just like the running back, Damian Pierce from Florida, Kenyon Green left left guard is Davis Mill. All right, Saturday, I'm not going to let us go off the air without asking you about it. We've asked you about it before, back when it first happened. Saturday's the uh, second phase of the Texas Sports Hall of Fame media wing being, uh, well, it's being doubled, and you're a part of that. We've had everybody but, well, Frank Lieber's gone, and then we have not been able to talk to Bill Mercer but everybody else has appeared on this show, and you, of course, every week. What Are you getting nervous with speech and all that? What's going on with you inside? First of all, I am nervous. I got butterflies. I'm worried about getting too choked up when I bring up about my mom and dad and how much I wish they would be there, could be there. And there's going to be people I know back to Crestview Elementary. Bill Goss, one of the greatest baseball players in Baylor history. Bill and I have been friends. Since third grade, Astro fans since the first game in '62, and uh, a lot of people are coming down, coming up from Houston, and it's it's going to be a great event. And I and I say this in all truthfulness: when we put the first class in, and the writers were Dave Campbell, Mickey Herskowitz, Blackie Sheridan, Dan Jenkins, I know I do not belong in a group with them. I voted for them, and I know what's that like. And our intention was never to have a second class of media in the Hall of Fame. But they are, and I'm honored. It's a privilege. But I will never, ever think that I belong in that same group with those four I just mentioned, not to mention Kern Tips, mm-hmm. Vern Lundquist, Jack Dale, and the late, great Frank Fallon. Well, John, does it kind of bring back memories to you, the story in the trip Sunday, and now this coming back to Waco to be inducted? Well, Bryce Cherry's interviewing me tonight. He's writing a column on me in the Trib one day this week. So, yeah, everything. I was telling a friend today all the trouble I used to get into at Richville High School. And there, and I, I was supposed to graduate in 70, and I was such a, a moron. I didn't graduate till 71, and I was a tough person for the students. They probably see this and say, boy, I remember the John McClain I used to have. Funny, they got the same name because there's no way they could think that that guy is going into the Texas Sports Hall of Fame Saturday night. You earned it, man. Well, we can't wait to see you. I'll Thank see you, you guys very Thank much. You. And stick them. It's John McClain, Hall of Fame columnist, Pro Football Hall of Fame, and now will be soon a part of the Texas Sports Hall of Fame. I like every NFL writer we have on just like – when it comes to OTAs, yeah. and they're all just like, there's nothing to yeah. see there. Yeah, the only thing question I said, no, there's not. But, like, you can sometimes tell what they like. All right, go, oh, they're lining them up here. I wonder if that holds. Yeah. yeah. But, 
you know, the cow, the thing I was interesting to me about the Cowboys was they were lining Jake Ferguson up at fullback a lot, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. Well, all right. Well, that, that, that what's, what's happens when they're, you know, in pads, but that, that's just a note for later on. Other than that, because I've been to the rookie mini camp. Uh, I remember watching when Eddie Lackey uh, and Jordan Iver were both of the Cowboys that went up there oh, man. and you Jeez. know, they were there for the, the tryouts and Niver Niver got hurt um, later on, but, uh, but yeah, they were both there and, I remember watching going, what am I, am I just watching? Is this just drills? Is this all this is going to be, yeah. you know? And then you get, you're essentially there to talk to them for the first time, but watching, um, gave me nothing. Like they should have really just served lunch to the media at that point. Well, when I get a Baylor open window, I'm typically just like, all right, who's in the yellow jerseys? Yeah. You know, who are the, who are the guys that aren't practicing? And then, yeah, who's, who's getting the most reps? I mean, there are 